Welcome to Apostolic Sermons TV. On this channel, you're going to be getting soul lifting messages, prayers that will help you grow and mature spiritually. Remember to subscribe to this YouTube channel, like the video you're about to watch, and comment also. Thank you and stay blessed. So he has to follow you around to operate it. The, the thing has high pressure, high temperature. He is the mechanic that goes around an anointed man operating. All right, so when God anoints you with the Holy Ghost, when he anoints you with power, it, it is not that you change. It is just that the substance with which you are anointed begins to manifest its strength. It's a deposit from God. Uh, and, and it's not only God that gives deposits. There are also deposits from the enemy. One of uh, the traditional rulers in among my people, among my tribe, he doesn't visit people. Because he normally travels with an entourage, a spiritual entourage. And if a, a pregnant woman looks upon him, she will lose the, the baby instantly. Because he is anointed with something, he's demonic. And as he moves around, uh, the power of what he's anointed with begins to salute the people in the environment. Now, Jesus had a ministry of philanthropy because the Bible says that he went about doing good. The Greek word good is the word from whence the English word philanthropy was derived. It means that because of the deposit that was upon Jesus, he could not sit in one place. And what we call the ministry of Jesus are the things that he did under the anointing in natural life circumstances. Because Jesus did not have a platform. Jesus did not have a pulpit. And what we call his ministry was the result of the things that happened just because he moved around and the anointing, the fragrance of the anointing that he carried performed several things consistent with the nature, the measure, and the power of what was at work on his life. For instance, if there is a, a, a burial ceremony and people are singing songs of sorrow, a, a long procession of mourners, Jesus would just show up, he would trace the procession to where the coffin is and he would touch it. He went about. He would go into the market. He had no pulpit. So there's no place to come for Wednesday service. There's no place to come for Thursday service. He just mingles among carpenters and then he finds someone that is crippled and he touches him. And the power and the fragrance of that with which and by which he was anointed goes to work that is the kingdom of god trying to capture and to catch the attention of a generation and if god wants to capture the attention of a generation what he does is that he finds someone and he anoints him and then the ministry of philanthropy that jesus was involved in continues through the life and the ministry of that fellow so it is not the guy that is a superstar it's the anointer that is a superstar if we check this golden scripture which gives us the coordinates of an anointing and his performance his function and his operation you will find that when god anoints a man hallelujah for those of you that read biochemistry there's biochemistry in this scripture you can see biochemistry there all right you see when you are when you have typhoid fever the organism that is responsible for typhoid is called salmonella salmonella paratyphi and if we take a sample and we bring it into the microbiology lab and we develop a culture an environment where salmonella can grow when it has prospered in the culture what we do in biochemistry is that we introduce the drugs we introduce amoxil in one of the petri dishes we introduce um ciprofloxacin in another one we introduce chloramphenicol in another one then we go and come back the next day. You will notice that the one that Amoxil was introduced to, his potency in destroying Salmonella was, well, yeah, it, it, it's doing something, but it's slow. You check the one for chloramphenicol, and it, it's entirely burnt off. The, and everything is burnt off. You check the one for Cipro, Cipro, Fluxacin, then you see that it has, it's stronger than Amoxil, but it's not as strong as chloramphenicol. So when you are prescribing, you now say, um, Amoxil has strength one. Cipro has strength two. Um, what? Chloramphenicol has strength three. But the doctors will normally say, start from Amoxil. Start from the small one so that it doesn't shake your liver. The same thing is happening here. The Bible, are you, are you with me? You are not with me. <laughs> He said, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power. Then he went about doing philanthropy and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. It means that the anointing has 
plus three effect on oppression. If it's oppression, it is 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 potency. His potency for oppression is high. He went about doing good. There were diverse forms of philanthropy that he did, but when he came to oppression, he healed all. There was an intensity on the matter of oppression. Just in case you came here tonight to oppress, some demons have been chasing you in the dream. You, when you wake up, you want to say Jesus, you say, The anointing has super potency for oppression in the name of Jesus Christ. I don't know, but our God hates oppression with passion. And the antidote that he has made available to tackle oppression with hyper capacity, hyper potency, superpower is called the anointing. One thing about the anointing is that when you become anointed, you cannot stay in one place. I was fasting to a desk in the oil industry in my country. I was good at what I did. I loved figures. I loved numbers. We functioned as, as um, engineers offshore onshore at the depots on the sites we are experts of fiscalization i like what i do it's demanding it's tasking mentally tasking but i was fastened to my seat oh my god and then the anointing came i will escape during the weekend and cast a few devils and come back and the anointing Hallelujah. i was trying to manage the anointing on the seat but i will escape nobody knows i've escaped I use the anointing to know whether the road is clear. I, they, they say my anointing. I use it. It's clear. I move. I've moved. I've, I've used all kinds of transport. The waterways, the road, and the air. Anyone is an option. Because when the anointing comes upon you, you become mobile. But on Sunday night, 12 midnight, 2 a.m., I must sneak back into Lagos. I, I must be on my seat. On the 16th of August, 2019, I was going, I sneaked again. And I was in a city called Oyo. And when I entered my hotel room, Jesus began to speak to me. He said, I've come to set you free, so that where I am, there also will my servant be. There are dimensions of anointing you have that Jesus needs to free you. Your job can become a chain. Your, your high-paying job, I was paid hard. But it became a fetter. It became something for which I needed deliverance. Because when the anointing comes upon you, you have no choice but to go about. You, are, oh my God, you go about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil because God was with him. The final thing you need to know about the anointing is that God will not anoint you in such a way that you don't need him to operate it. So he has to follow you around to operate it. The, the thing has high pressure, high temperature. He is the mechanic that goes around an anointed man operating. So he determines what measure comes out by time. You might be expecting that you raise the dead and he only heals headache and saves people. <laughs> and the day you say, I didn't pray enough and there's no scripture and you just sluggishly come to the pulpit. Uh, that's the day. That's the day even handkerchiefs that come from your body can heal the afflicted. Because it is God working with you, operating the anointing on your life. If someone is genuinely anointed, it is something that, that um, endears God to you. It makes God around to come around you. Uh, because there's an investment on your life through which he can continue his ministry of philanthropy and so he wants to be around you to regulate you and one of the proofs that the anointing is at work in your life is that the anointing has capacity to teach it is instructive it has an educational pavilion that he ushers you into how many of you have read the book of first john chapter 2 verse 20 please help me first john 2 20. first john 2 not 3 2 t w o But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. Now the unction that you have received from the Holy One gives you access to what we call spiritual knowledge. Such knowledge that you are not taught about, such knowledge that you cannot learn. It is knowledge that is handed out to you as a gift from the Spirit of Christ. Meanwhile, the unction, an unction, the unction we are talking about is a knowledge faculty. You see, you don't need to teach a dog how to back. The dog has a knowledge faculty that educates it about backing. You don't need to teach a teacher, someone called to teach the Bible. You don't need to teach him how to teach. There is an unction capacity that is bequeathed to him from whence his education about teaching takes place. You don't need to teach a healing evangelist how to heal because embedded in the anointing is a knowledge faculty. 
we have an unction from what the holy one and we know all things next verse oh. um, go to 19 first 19 uh, no if I start from here some of you will be confused go back to your 20 but you have an unction from the holy one and you know all things this unction it's a knowledge faculty all right so you don't need to teach a prophet how to prophesy there is an unction that supports a prophetic anointing first of all the unction will switch on and when the unction switches on then you begin to receive what is called spiritual knowledge the proof that an anointing is at work is that uh, there is a teaching an on-site teaching that takes place inside the teaching i'm talking about is spiritual it's handed down to you you can't learn it you see before i came out today the unction switched on and the unction began to teach me what to say before you you know you are big people right? you are mighty people i can't just come and stand before you you are not looking for a good spokesman you you you, you have um, when do they when do they broadcast your news in ghana national news 7, 7 p.m <laughs> every day 7 p.m there are people that know how to talk that are saying something and if you have met a doctor before he studied for six years if you go there he will say something about you he will take his equipment up, touch here touch here then he will say laparatomy <laughs> you have an answer it's built into the deposit through which you can have access to spiritual knowledge and until you have spiritual knowledge you cannot deal with a spiritual thing until you have spiritual knowledge you cannot you cannot participate effectively in spiritual warfare everything in the spiritual plane is supported by spiritual knowledge and the purpose of the unction that is a support structure an administrative structure around the anointing on a man's life is so that he can have access to the knowledge that is handed out by the spirit of god at the spot of the moment so that you know what to do and how to get it done and when you you follow the knowledge that you get by the anointing then the power of the anointing opens up and god begins to do through your life what you don't have the capacity to do as a mortal what is the anointing that is made upon you that confers that ability please help me tell your neighbor you have an unction oh you, that was dry that was dry even say oh my oh my oh my you have an unction the guy did not say you are about to have an unction he didn't say you are going to have an unction he said what he said you have you have an unction you have an unction there is so much that your pastor can teach you there's so much that your preacher can tell you but the preacher cannot tell you what the unction will tell you the scope of education that the pastor a preacher brings to you is different from the scope of education that the unction brings to you you have an unction once upon a time i just came back from a very long trip and uh, there was this lady uh, she wanted me to see her daughter because she was going to get married and she wanted me to bless her and i, I felt that was that was good that was okay that was kind and uh, we waited for this her daughter to come and the moment she came the unction switched on and i saw that she had 14 days to die uh, and she was showing me someone that was going to marry but i was seeing someone that was going to die you have what an unction there is spiritual knowledge that is facilitated on on the basis of the unction oh my god please help me tell your name again you have an unction i saw a lady on her way to die and i told her her mom this one is about to die and she didn't believe me i said all right uh, to make this debt visible to you the unction now taught me if you want to make the debt visible uh, ask her to look into your eyeballs and she looked into my eyeballs and the spirit of death that was upon her reacted and you know what this black i don't know what it's called the black part of your eye that is okay there's no no ophthalmologist here to give us perspective there's one black thing inside of your eye that's the thing i'm talking about that thing that thing went up so all that was left was white and she fell and was in that state for 35 minutes the woman that brought someone to be blessed for marriage the prayer point changed <laughs> tell him again you have an answer <laughs> if all you know is what you studied in the university of ghana the master's degree that you bagged from Kumasi, you are incapable of handling spiritual things for spiritual things you need spiritual knowledge and that knowledge is sourced in an unction it's a knowledge faculty 
that is spiritually built to cater for spiritual things and it is from thence that spiritual knowledge is handed out if you see a man that is vast in the spirit it means his unction is updated the unction is like a software time and again it is updated to capture different scopes of things to capture different types of things to capture different situations to capture different circumstances i i, I hope that your unction is not is not out of date it still carries the temperature and the nomenclature that you had the day you gave your life to christ <laughs> it means you'll be incapable of handling some matters may the lord cause us to grow in the unction just like just like someone in primary school is, is, is in school someone in kindergarten is in school someone in secondary school is in school someone in the university undergraduate is in school someone in in masters doing a master's program is in school someone doing a phd is in school someone doing postdoc is in school. the unction the vocabulary is supposed to grow as you begin to interface with jesus as you begin to interface with him the scope the dimension there are times that you will have encounters with god and god will send you some we say from now you will do deliverance the nomenclature of deliverance was not part of your unction if issues that pertain to deliverance comes you are you blank out the, the letters the some some letters are missing in the alphabet you know a you know b you know c you know d you know that's all if it enters z p you become confused because your unction level is low as you navigate with jesus he gives you more vocabulary he gives you more spiritual knowledge he, he makes you competent for greater tasks for more sensitive adventures but you must go about because there's a business of philanthropy that god wants you to accomplish so the first thing god gives a kingdom man that has received approval from him is that he begins to trust him with measures of the anointing anointings have different types there are two variables that we must consider when we talk about the anointing the first variable is the type of the anointing and then the second variable is the measure of the anointing the third variable is the channel of the anointing but there's a type then there's a measure and then there's a channel now you will notice that the anointing that was upon elijah for instance was the same anointing upon elijah but it was in a higher measure when you see the same anointing in a different measure in a higher measure for instance it has capacity to do much more than it would do in a lower measure sometimes what you need is not a new anointing what you need is a higher measure of the same anointing that you have the second thing that we must understand is that the anointing manifests through different channels you might have the gift of word of knowledge for instance and the channel of the manifestation of the gift of word of knowledge that you have might be open visions it can be dreams it can be through the inner voice it can be through the inner witness it can be through the knowing of revelation these are different channels but it's the same gift you are not with me well because you are not with me we will uh, channels God is a God of variety and God decides what channel what what channel he gives you someone I, I saw I saw um, a friend of mine when I went to do my youth service somewhere in northern Nigeria he is a seer and before that time I don't see visions um, I walk with the inner voice that's the channel God gave me but he's a seer and because his own manifestation was different I thought he was false until I went back to the scripture and I found seers in the Bible. Ooh. Then I knew he was a prophet. But his channel was different. And there were so many revelations that came through that road and helped us to outsmart the devils, demons. He was so competent in the area of deliverance. Are you with me? My area was healing. But his area was deliverance. He can see demons. He can see. He said, this one is like, oh, this is how this one is. He said, are you seeing it? It's a different channel hallelujah after one year that we ministered together then i began to see and i started growing in sight but it's the same gift just a different channel just opened up so you need to understand your uniqueness in the template that god makes available in your life and then you, be, you need to become competent in the use of that channel may the lord give you understanding now if we had time out i've given you a little some advice some tips so that you can be accurate within the scope of the channel that God has made available to you because the anointing has to flow through a certain tributary and it is the Holy Spirit that decides what tributary he makes available to you in keeping with your uniqueness your calling your context your location and your assignment the second thing that God gives a man of the kingdom that he wants to begin to use for sensitive issues is that he makes a mantle available to him I, I need to 
I should tell you the difference between an anointing and a mantle. A mantle is a spiritual garment. The spiritual garment, you see, those days, um, in order for a priest to function, there were very specific garments that he, need, he needed to put on in order for him to enter into several places within the courts of the temple as he administers his line of ministry. Uh, there were very detailed descriptions of how his tunic and his regalia should look like. But all those things in the Old Testament are types and shadows of things within the, the context of the reality, which is what we have in Christ Jesus. The Old Testament is very powerful because it gives you graphic illustrations of intangible spiritual things that we are managing and administering right now under the uh, economy of the grace of God. So when you understand it graphically, you will know what it takes for you to yield more perfectly to God and so that you can handle the utensils of the grace of God that he makes available to you. A good example of a mantle is what um, Elijah experienced in the book of First Kings chapter 18. Just in case, ooh, you see, the anointing is teaching me now. Let me tell you a story before I read um, First Kings chapter. Hey, my time is almost up. Once upon a time, I I was in a place of prayer, and uh, the Lord began to give me insight. He said, "The first office that I trained you is the office of a teacher, and you must have discovered that I'm strongest in that office." After a long time, the Lord opened the office of a prophet to me. And he said, if you want to migrate, this is me. It will not work for you. All right. This is what the unction taught me. It's good to know. It's a testimony. But it won't necessarily work for you because you will need the unction to direct you as a specific individual in the plan of God. So I was trained by a teacher and I was trained to function in the office of a teacher. I used to teach Sunday school and I like teaching Sunday school. People normally come early to church because they want to meet my session. And that was a privilege that God gave me. So I thought I was a teacher until I had an encounter with Jesus. So I've called it to be an apostle. And I'm going to open the faculties of other scopes of anointings that are peculiar to other offices apart from the office that you are used to, which is your teaching office. You will operate like an evangelist effectively. You will operate like a prophet effectively. And these are teachings from where? From oh, this my class is not. I think uh, what is going on here is what Jesus spoke about. Jesus said, I have many things to tell you, but you cannot bear them now. <laughs> Seems you can't bear it. You can't. All right. So, uh, he began to teach. That's, it, 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 I know you have a pastor, but you need to learn how to hear Jesus. There are so many specific things that pertain to your calling, pertain to your ministry, pertain to the workings of the grace that God has made available to you that your pastor can never know. It will be a product of your intimacy with Jesus Christ. And Jesus began to tell me that if you, if you are teaching, because the teaching anointing is very domineering, it's very possessive. And when you begin to teach, you don't remember any other thing. But he said, if you want to migrate from the teaching office, you want to migrate into the prophetic office so that your hearing and your sight can open up. He told me what to do. It's the unction that is teaching me. I'm, I'm teaching you what the unction taught me. He said, he said get a minstrel. And let the person begin to play softly. When the mystery begins to play, you'll be at, at first you'll be hearing the sound. Then when you yield, the sound is going to make you yield. The moment you begin to yield, and you yield to the place where I am, then I will make you to be able to perceive the activities of the angels that walk with you. And through the whispers, the signs that the angels will bring to you, you will see and hear like a prophet. Most of us have not spent enough time with Jesus to know your peculiar means of operation. You know, the Bible says that are compare themselves with themselves. They are not wise. First of all, know yourself. Know yourself in the unction. Know yourself in the anointing. Jesus have, has a thing or two to teach you about what he deposited on your life. You might not be a seer. You may not be a prophet. You might be an evangelist. And there is a bowl of fire that God has placed upon you and when you pray for some hours for three hours you begin to sense the burning that burning will burn on you for long until Jesus say okay do you know the meaning of that burning many of you here receive spiritual burnings and baptisms but you don't know the meaning until the unction opens to teach you you will never know what it means but I need to tell you that there are some anointings when they switch on they leave their the litter 
your body with signs. But it's the unction that will interpret it. And if the unction does not interpret it, it those signs will be wasted. You cannot key into the spiritual realities that are available because the unction has not yet taught you. He said, ye have an unction. See, a door has opened for me to move from this my teaching and to move into the prophetic. But I will not enter this one. You see, are you with me? When you grow, when you begin to grow, then God will begin to give you authority. Authority to manage atmospheres. If you don't have the authority to manage an atmosphere, when a window opens like this, enter quickly. Because this is your only exit. <laughs> Just enter quickly. May the Lord give you understanding. Amen. Hallelujah. And that's why um, it's not every kind of music or worship minister I can listen to. Because that's my entry gate into the prophetic. If you bring someone that doesn't know Jesus and begins to minister, I cannot enter again. It closes all the doors. We are trapped. We are in chains. We are locked up with fetters. And I literally feel trapped when someone that doesn't know Jesus is trying to sing about him. If you are fake, I may not know. But if you sing, hey! <laughs> in the book of 1 Kings, chapter 18, we see an example of the mantle. 1 Kings chapter 18. The prophet had given some prophetic decrees. If you check it very carefully, his utterance was for 29 seconds. Elijah the Tishbite. And he gave a decree for 29 seconds and locked the heavens over Israel. And put the key in his pocket and walked away. The prophets of Baal and Ashtaroth tried to change his decree, but it was impossible. The king was humbled and had to subscribe to him. And they met on the mountain top in the day that God had ordained to open the heavens. And even though God had ordained to open the heavens, the prophet would have to pray seven units of prayer in order for the hand of God to move over the cloud. As he put in the first unit, he asked the serpent to go check the cloud because the impact of what he was doing on his knees was going to appear in the heavens. The first time, the second time, the third time, the fourth time, the fifth time, the sixth time. And when he went again the seventh time, the Bible says he saw a cloud. A cloud that was like a hand of a man. Before he saw the cloud, he had already counseled the king. He said, go eat and drink. Saddle your donkey and begin to move. Because I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. And when he had heard, do you still remember the day of Pentecost? There was first a sound before there was a move. Before God does anything, he makes a sound first. The reason for which he makes a sound is so that the prophets can pick the frequency and know if there needs to be any arrangement or reorganization that needs to be done. If there is an instruction that needs to come to bring people into alignment before God shows up, they will have that interval. And so he heard the sound of the abundance of rain and he told the king to ride ahead. Then he began to put in the units of prayer. One unit, two, and when the seventh unit was put in, he saw a cloud that was fashioned in the hand of a man. Let me read to you. First Kings chapter 18, verse 45 and 46. And it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heavens was black with clouds and wind and there was a great rain and Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. Ahab's chariot was, was being pulled by six war horses. War horses are 4%, only 4% of the horse family. So it's very difficult to find a war horse. And the war horse is the only horse that is not afraid of fire. He had six of them strapped to his chariot. And they were on top speed heading for Jezreel. 46. And the hand of the Lord, this is a mantle. He came on Elijah and he kidded his loins. And what happened? And ran before the entrance, <laughs> before the chariots. He got to Jezreel before the one that was using four war horses to pull his chariot. Hey, 
it was not this it was only once in the ministry of elijah that he had this experience so mantles are not yours they are spiritual garments soaked with grace that god borrows you once in a while the one that may the lord give you understand the one that is consistent with your calling and consistent with your ministry is the anointing that one is always available it's based on covenant the covenant that god has with you so if you go and pray and say lord the anointing will come because your covenant with the lord is what occasions the anointing but the mantle is the lord so when he decides he said i need pastor Dermot to disappear from here and appear in tamale then he gives you the mantle that can do that he borrows you so that weight of grace comes upon you that can accomplish something that is not is 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 sovereign listen to me god guarantees that you walk in the supernatural but the spectacular will happen sparingly you don't build your life based on the spectacular but you build your life based on the supernatural so the operation of mantles are supernatural they are not within the scope of what you can fit you now lock yourself up in the room and say if god doesn't transport you to tamale you will not go you will be you'll be there when drive fasting because it's not within the scope of what you can manage by faith oh my god okay since you are not here since you are not since. are you with me whereas you can pray and say god anoint me but there's no prayer point that gives you the ground to ask for a mantle a mantle is suffering and if the lord knows you need it by an act of his own will he will make it happen so that you can perform an act that is supernatural that is beyond the scope of the expected range of that is spectacular that's beyond the scope of the expected range of the supernatural that god has given us as believers in view of our callings and our ministry it was only one time in the ministry of elijah that he was aided by a mantle i don't have time to take you to the book of um, uh, second Corinthians chapter 5 to show you the technology of a man to hide works not today the hand of the Lord he came upon Elijah who knows if the hand of the Lord will come upon you tonight but one thing is evident when the hand of the Lord came upon him he gave him speed and someone that had established a lead established an advancement for many years and then something comes upon you and it gives you speed you will receive speed in the name of jesus christ number three as i try to round up because this is what uh, the time can take i need to define what stature is spiritual stature uh, stature there are some things that god can't do through your life because of your level even though God is omnipotent, very powerful, but He's not so powerful with you. So there are some things in God that you will need to look for a man that has stature. It is Him that God is willing to do such things through. Not because those things are not available, but He can't do it through you because of your level. Are you still there? Okay, let's do Acts chapter 3 verse 6, then I'll shut down. Then you can go study the other matters. Acts 3 6, quickly. Then Peter said, Pit, silver and gold, I have none. But such as I have, I give thee. Such as I have. That was the token of his stature. Stature is the position of favor that we have before God because we have yielded to his disciplines. By the time you begin to accept the authority of God over your life and you subject yourself to his disciplines, then there are things that he can trust you with in the kingdom. Those things are available, but they are not commonplace. They are only set up for people that are willing to accept the disciplines of God. It's a such as I have. I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. He was making demand on something that he had with Jesus. My question to you today is what do you have with Jesus? you have a secret with Jesus the secret that you can make demands on in the public and Jesus will back you up he had something and just to clear your doubts he was 
that thing was still with him even though Naira and Kobo cities and what? Persuas. He was lacking in Persuas. But that thing was still there. But may, may you not lack cities. <laughs> in the name of Jesus. But I'm just showing you that he had a challenge in the natural but it didn't affect what he had in custody in the supernatural. And he made a demand on it. Such as I have. So there are things you have from the Lord. I show you, I have a few. I have a few of those things. Such as I have. <laughs> I give you. In the name of Jesus. Do you know that this guy, this guy, this guy didn't say, the guy said first, he said, look on us. I know you are looking to heaven. Stop. Look on us. Silver and gold, we do not have. But there is something we have. Such as we have with God, we give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. I don't have time to take you to the keys of heaven. He said, Thou, Simon by Jonah, you shall be called Kepha. And upon this rock I will build my church. And the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. So they are keys. I give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever you bind on earth, it shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you lose on earth, it shall be. Those are kingdom things. May you be found worthy to be brought into custody of, of deep kingdom. There are dimensions of kingdom things you can receive as inheritance. And it begins to produce money. The things people struggle to get will, will be looking for you. I'll show you. They'll be looking for you. You see, when you visit the priest in Ogobo and you tell him you want money, he won't send you to University of Ghana to economics department. He will ask you to go and bring your daughter. How is your daughter connected to money? Oh, there are spiritual resources that can be made available. And the things that you are looking for will begin to look for you. Now, hear me. Prosperity is not something that is lost. Maybe you are trying to find it. It's not lost. Come back home. He says, seek it first. The kingdom of God and his righteousness. And the things that the Gentiles seek will navigate in your direction. If you are still with me, say amen. Yeah. Tonight, you will be clothed. The hand of the Lord will come upon you. And you will be changed into another man. Oh, God of mercy. God of mercy. The hand of the Lord will come upon you. And you will be changed into another man you know like i said as i round up the holy ghost came the unction was activated it means god wanted to give me more knowledge you need spiritual knowledge to get by if you are going to be a champion if you are going to be a territorial landlord with what it takes to administer change in the territory because it's different it's a different thing for you to minister to people and it's a different thing for you to minister to territories to nations there is a capacity for that kind of delivery. May you desire the big kingdom things in the name of Jesus Christ. There is an anointing that equips you to set up kings. Whereas people are going to the polling post, polling unit, to cast their votes. You can cry, cry in a meeting where there are four people. According to that which I have with Jesus, and the visions that I saw early this morning. The issue of uh, who will rule this country has been decided in that. You are still waiting to go to the... <laughs> oh! We seek kingdom men that have stature. That God will give the grace to enter into the corridors where the issues that pertain to the destiny of nations are decided. Men like Melchiah that saw what took place in the throne room. Those ones are superior to prophets that profess on the streets. A time will come when people that just have the gift of prophecy will not have access to the secret. Because the thing is not yet available in the spirit realm for them to pick. Then we'll know the people that have access to the throne room. Senators that are invited into the congregation of witness to see the things that God is doing and to know the things that God is administering from the heavens above. Peter was one of such men. And even though the activities of Pentecost were about to be mi mi misunderstood, 
discredited. They said they were drunk. It took the ministry of an interpreter, a man that knew what had taken place in heaven, to bring perspective. He said, the Jesus that you killed, right now in the heavens, God has exalted him. He has been coronated both Lord and Christ. And the evidence of his status and stardom in the spirit is what you see and hear. You will need a man that has a way to the throne room to bring perspective. But that, those are issues of stature. Have you found favor with God? Oh, you want a car, you want a message Benz. Me, I want favor with God. Concerning John the Baptist, it was said that he shall be great in the sight of God. His stature was allocated to him even before he was born. He has a destiny to be great in the sight of God. That is his ordination from heaven. And because of his destiny, his tongue must not touch wine. He must never be acquainted with strong drink because he will be a Nazarite from his mother's womb. <laughs> uh, he had a message for the tax collectors. He had a message for the priests. He had a message for the king. In every aspect of society, he had a witness for them from the rivers of Jordan. You don't know what happened. His father is a priest. Is that not so? But in order for the word of the Lord to come to him, God had to bypass the very, very, very rigid political structure, very rigid religious structure. Let me show you in the book of Luke chapter 3, quickly. Luke chapter 3. Luke chapter 3. Let me read the scripture to you. Ah, where's my technical man? Let me look for it here. Now in the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate being governor of Judea and Herod the Tetrarch of Galilee and his brother Philip the Tetrarch of Eturia and of the region of Trachonitis and Lysenius the Tetrarch of Abilene. Next verse. That's the political structure. This is the spiritual structure. Annas and Caiaphas being high priests because Annas was the descendant of Aaron. Caiaphas was the political high priest that was elected by Caesar. So they, they were managing two of them, Annas and Caiaphas. This was the political structure that was in place and the religious structure that was in place when God bypassed the political and the religious structure for his word to go to John the Baptist. Where? In the wilderness. When God finds a man that he bequeathed to him stature, he can bypass heavy religious structures in nations. He can bypass heavy structures in government and the counsel of God can travel to the wilderness because God wanted to set up a different priesthood. A priesthood that will point the nations to the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. The current political structure, the current religious structure lack the stature to point the world to the Son of God. And the word of the Lord, it evaded the high political palaces. It evaded the temple and it went into the wilderness. In this day, God is about to perform another marvel. Yes, you will find his voice again in the manger. You will find his voice in a very small prayer group where the hearts of the people are aligned with heaven. And the word of the Lord, the word of the Lord will come to nameless people, will come to faceless people, people, whose, people in whose families a prophet never rose. When nobody ever said, don't share the Lord, then the word of God will navigate into the wilderness. Oh, there is a new breed without greed. 